hello, there's a group of people that believe that you shouldn't study the Bible, that you need to rely on the Holy Spirit for a teaching and doctrine, and that the Bible somehow is the mark of the beast or some other weird stuff. And they always quote this verse, 2 Corinthians um, uh, 3, verse 6, and it says, um, who have all made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kill, killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. They take that verse and they say, oh, that means that if you study the Bible, which is the letter, it'll kill you, but it won't give you life. Um, that is not what it says. And if you just simply read the context of where that verse is, everything is is written in context. In verse Second uh, Corinthians 3, 6, it says, who, right? So if it says who, we need to know who it's talking about. So look at what it says. It says not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as ourselves, as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. And then it says who, see, who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit, but the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. Well, he explains you know this he says but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones he's talking about the ten commandments was glorious so that the children of israel not steadfastly behold the face of moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away the ten commandments were engraven in stones as far as i can tell that was engraven in stones and that was this ministration of death okay not the bible not the epistles and all that we're supposed to study those things and uh, how shall not that ministration be be rather glorious and then uh, this explains what what how it is the, the ministration of death second Corinthians 3 9 says for the ministration of condemnation be glory see now it says if the ministration of condemnation that's where the death is it's a condemnation much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceeding glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect. Okay, so it, it's talking about this glory of this, um, the, the, the ministration of death. And now let me explain why it's the ministration of death. If you go to Romans chapter 7, it's, it explains this. It says, um, uh, Know ye not, brethren, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth, for the woman which has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as she liveth. But if the husband be dead, she's loose from the law of her husband. Okay, so then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she's free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. So when the husband dies, she's free from whatever that... Um, law is okay wherefore my brethren you also become dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should no longer be married to another so what Paul is saying is that through Christ the law was put dead because Christ put Christ died right where you are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto God now, this doesn't explain how the law condemns, but it explains that that is how we're no longer under the law, okay? When we are in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. See, that is how sin leads to death. And it says, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in the members to bring forth unto death. Now, death, now he explains why it's by into law but now we are delivered from that law that being dead where we were held we should serve in newness of spirit not the oldness of the letter see that what shall we say then is a law so there's a replacement for the law because the law could not make you righteous but the spirit can God wants us to be lawful but the right the law the old law and Moses could never and the letter could never make you righteous because, uh, and Paul will explain that, but there's the newness of the spirit, and that is lawful. That's lawful, and it's the law of the spirit. 
and uh, so it says, what shall we say then is the law of sin? God forbid. And they, I had not known sin, but by the Lord, I had not known less, except the law that said, thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking con occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For the law, without the law, sin was dead. See that? For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. See? So he's saying <clears throat> that the commandment revives sin in you, because then you have awareness of good and evil. It's kind of like when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they saw good and evil, and when they saw that, that it caused them to sin. <clears throat> and the commandment which was ordained of life, I found to be unto death. See? So the, the law was supposed to give you life, because it was supposed to show you what sin is, but it couldn't. It wasn't sufficient enough, because it didn't have the spirit. It didn't have um, the spirit. And so it says, for sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. See? That is what happened. Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Yeah, it shows what's just and it shows what's good. It shows what sin is, but it can't save you because it, it just only condemns you. Because after all, if all men have sinned, and the law says that we've all coveted and we've all done these things, then that's condemnation. It doesn't save you, right? It shows you that you're condemned. Was that... Th was then that why that's why we need salvation we would need salvation if we didn't have condemnation from the law right was then that which is good made death unto me god forbid but sin see now he's saying it's not the law that bring, bring you death but sin um work death in him um so the sin just made it the commandment made his sin more acceptable it says was then that which is good made death unto me god forbid but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual. See, the law is spiritual, but it's you're, our, we're carnal. So we need the spirit in us, not in the law. See, the law is written by God, so it's spiritual, but it's not, we're not. You know, So we need to have the spirit. For that which I do, I do allow not. And then many people twist this and turn us around and make it look like we can't help but sin. She says, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that do I. He's talking, when he's talking about I, he's talking about his flesh. The flesh wages war against the spirit. Okay, but it doesn't mean that we don't have the spirit, you know. So if then I do that. That which I would not, I consent to the law that is good. So when we do do good things according to law, then we're saying the law is good. We're consented. So now he's he's you know that's what he's trying to show. He's trying to show that if you are in the flesh and you're not in the spirit and you see the law, it's only going to magnify you. It's only make, going to make you sin more because it's going to point out. It's going to make it obvious what your sin is. Your innocence goes away, and when your innocence goes away then your um, con your guilty conscience comes in, and that brings death. And so um, uh, so the solution to this is that um, Romans chapter 8 says, in Romans chapter 8 says, For what the law could not do, and that was weak through the flesh. See, the, the law is strong, it's the spirit, but the problem is the weak, this flesh is weak. God solved that problem of us not being righteous by sending his, it says, it says Romans 8, 3 says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. See, when he sent his Son, his Son was in flesh, just like you and me. And there's a reason for that. There's a purpose for that. And it says, And for sin condemns sin in the flesh. The reason why Jesus came in the flesh was so that that flesh that was weak could be put away, could be condemned. And so it says, the, Romans 8, 3, let me read it in context. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. That's me and you if you believe. 
And how? It says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now we have the spirit so that we could be righteous. Before the spirit, the law would only make you sin more because you didn't have the spirit. But now that you have the spirit, you have the ability to be righteous and fulfill the righteousness of the law. Um, it says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Now remember, I'm reading from Romans. I'm not making this up. Okay, Romans, eight, look it up in your Bible. Romans 8, 3, Romans 8, 4 is talking about the righteousness of the law being fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Now let's see what the consequences are of walking after the flesh and walking after the spirit and what it means. It says, um, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the flesh. So those that are after the flesh, they obey the flesh in its lust. When they desire things, they do not have the faith to believe that Jesus has made it so that you can overcome sin. And so they're not walking after the spirit. They're minding the things of the flesh. But they that are after the flit, spirit, the things of the spirit. So if you're after the spirit, you mind the things of the spirit. And I'm going to explain further. If it sounds confusing, because it goes step by step. That's how Paul does things. He just one verse after another, he establishes these things. He said, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. He's showing the results of being carnally minded, obeying the flesh. It's death. And he was showing that the law only just makes you sin more because you don't have the spirit. But if you have the spirit, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life, eternal, eternal life and peace. Now he explains why. Because the carnal mind is in an enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So in Romans 7 he explained how your carnal mind cannot conform to the law. It, it, it just opposes it. It's not subject to the law. It can't be subject to the law. But the thing is, if you're a Christian, my friend, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you should understand that you are not in the flesh you should you don't have to walk after the flesh you can walk after the spirit and then the, so it says so then they are they that are in the flesh cannot please God um, Romans 8 9 says but ye are not in the flesh but in in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you okay now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his See the correlation between having the Spirit and walking after the flesh and walking after the Spirit. Galatians explains what the fruit of the Spirit, it's love, peace, joy, long-suffering, patience, kindness, goodness. And he said the, the fruit of the flesh is hatred, envy, revelings, fighting, uh, lusting, you know, all these things. And he said that if you are like this, you don't inherit the kingdom of God. You don't, you're not saved. And it says, and it now it's proved this in Romans 8 9, that this has to do with salvation. Because uh, 8, 9, and 10, 9, verse 9, 10, 11 say, But if you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. See? So we know it's the Spirit. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So he's talking about that you can be made righteous, not just pretend like you're righteous and say you're righteous when you're not. That's not the spirit of truth. But the spirit of him that raised it, now verse 11 says, Romans 8 verse 11 says, But if the spirit of them, him, that raised up Jesus from the dead, dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You see the correlation between the spirit and salvation. Salvation is when you get resurrected. That's when you get resurrected into eternal life. And then it says, uh, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. We don't have to live after the flesh. Believe this. Believe this. That's what faith is, right? Faith is believing I don't have to live after the flesh. If you say, but, 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 then you're not believing. Just trust and believe that you don't have to live after the flesh, that you have the Spirit. And this is for if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. See, that's the consequences of living after the flesh. Sin leads to death. 
But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. See that? So when we have faith in Christ, we believe that he put this flesh, the, my, yours and mine, the works of the flesh, he put to death on the cross so that we don't have to walk after the flesh anymore. That dead letter of the law that people keep saying is the Bible is what condemns people that aren't spiritual. The letter cannot condemn someone that is Christian, that is already Christian. There's no way the letter can condemn them. If they truly walk after the Spirit, there's no way that studying the Bible or reading the Bible is somehow going to condemn you. Unless you went back to the Old Testament and read it and forgot about what you were taught in the New Testament about Jesus and all those things, and you start to just read it not in faith, then you might become blind again. But that's not going to happen to you if you walk after the Spirit. For many, as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay? For you not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. So anyway, um, this goes on and on and on. Of course, it's Romans, which is the longest book in the New Testament, I think. And um, so... Um, the, the takeaway from this is that there are, you know, very foolish Christians out there that still don't understand, even though they, even people that don't agree with this doctrine still don't understand what the dead letter is. They still think that it has something to do with observing the law, that if you observe the law and think that you're saved, uh, uh, that somehow that's, that's not. No, if, if a man observe the law perfectly and he did it in faith he would be saved if a man in the old testament people follow the law they sacrificed the animals they um, followed all those rules in the old testament they couldn't follow them perfectly it was like a burden that they couldn't carry but they still followed the law in faith they still were justified by faith and they were saved abraham is an example abraham obeyed god's commandments God told him to circumcise, you know, be circumcised and circumcise his children. He did that. The, and then in the Old Testament, there, David observed the law. All those people were saved, and they observed the law. The, observing the law does not kill anybody. What happens if you, what, how, the law condemns all men equally, but it doesn't condemn you if you have faith in God. See? So faith in, in those the, the, the sacrificing the animals and all those things, that was just the way that God showed these people what righteousness was. And if they believed in faith, they would become righteous like that. But we're in a new, uh, a new Testament now because it has been completed by Jesus. And so now that old law of Moses has been replaced by the law of the Spirit so that we can walk truly, circumspectly walk. In other words, now, what I mean by circumspectly is the law is just a, limited. You know, it's just you can't write enough laws to prevent people from doing something wrong. Okay, but if you um, have the Holy Spirit, then you get taught the wisdom of God. He's the light of the world, and He'll light your path for you, so that you can clearly see your path, and you'll know what to do and instead of condemning you it turns it makes you into it turns you into uh, what God is it converts you into God oh, let me give you uh, explain this in scripture second Peter chapter 1 it says this uh, um, verse second Peter 1 verse 3 says according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. See, he's saying all things that pertain to life and godliness. That means being like God. And Second uh, Peter 1, 4 says, Whereby we are, giving, uh, are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises, okay, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. We can partake in God's nature. We're no longer just people in the flesh that are sinners. We can actually become like God and not be a sinner, be a holy person. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See, the world lusts after things, and that's corruption. Corruption is death. It's not eternal life. <coughs> but partaking in the divine nature is eternal life. 
2 Peter 1, 5 says, and besides this, he explains what to do uh, um, to make sure that you're saved. Because in 2 Peter 1, 10, it says, Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. So read what these things are that you should do that you never fall. All right, so um, I've said a mouthful, but I'm just getting frustrated. I keep seeing people that just miss the target because they haven't studied the Bible. They haven't looked at the context of what these verses are in, and they're not walking up to the Spirit. So if you're not walking up to the Spirit, you're not going to understand Scripture. See, that's how the letter kills if you don't walk up to the Spirit, you know. Okay, go ahead. Um, I mean, okay, um, have a good one. Have a good night, and uh, keep studying the Scriptures. They don't kill you. They give you life.